welcome back to another episode of a very british space program we're on episode 40 and we should have a landmark for this but we don't we just got a normal launch so in this episode we're all about the space harbors um, please you know if you've got anything to comment about space harbors put it down below if you like the episode subscribe if you really like it comment whatever uh, let's get going Right, so we uh, we saw at the start there the launch of a Faraday 2A. This is the uh, F011 that was delayed from the previous episode. And this is going up to Endurance 2. What I should add actually in is we do have a Discord now. So if you want to uh, join the Discord, the link is down below. Join along, talk, you can, you can chat to me, you can chat to other people that actually like the series or don't like the series and just want to tell me what I'm doing wrong and things like that. You know, you can get involved. It's a really nice group of people out there. Anyway back to the mission uh, we have on board pilot anita may on her third mission this is a second faraday mission i believe and we've also got engineer barry slater who uh, previously flew solo in the davy one and this is his first flight with another crew member i believe um, and they're going to be testing long duration occupation in the space harbor so they're hoping to stay for about 30 days uh, but first of all they've got to dock and uh, one of the problems with of course docking is um, we have about one and a half days worth of fuel and food and things like that on board the uh, the Faraday uh, 2A because that, that docking facility actually takes up a lot of space, a lot of weight. It's not like some of the Faraday 2Bs which actually have about seven days of supplies on them. So we have to actually do this rendezvous reasonably quickly. If it goes wrong, these are coming back down to earth after not completing their mission. Um, so we normally launch into the same plane as the station and then we're, we're basically trying to change our orbit and, and come into some sort of encounter within, ideally within about 20 hours. Uh, we, we'd, we'd prefer to be within 12. It gives us a lot of leeway then to actually do the docking. So they've, uh, they've carried out their burn, which has actually brought them into an encounter and then they're going to try and slow down. Um, so they're actually, well, they're going to try and change their, their velocity. So they're actually matching velocity at closest point of approach. Um, one of the things I've noticed with a number of my saves recently, and this is me going off topic a little bit, is that I am not seeing the markers for craft. Um, I believe I have to hit F4. I have a, recorded quite a few bits of video before doing that. So I think something's changed on my computer that's actually just triggered all of that to come off. Um, and I need to, I need to sort that out. So. We're going to come our set on our way in towards, this is Endurance 2 that we launched in the last episode. It's got those nice big solar panels, so we won't be needing to use any of the fueled cells that are actually available in this uh, in this craft at all while they're docked. And that's important because if they're going to spend 30 days on orbit, we have to save all of that 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 fuel cell just in case when they come back down to earth we have to do a, a few you know a few orbits around and also in case there's anything wrong with the station we can we can pull that up as backup and, and they can survive they do seem to be enjoying themselves now we're going into dock and you'll see we're actually going front end first which for this craft is a weirdness because you have to turn it round um, which is a bit of a, an odd moment you have to decide when is the transition from approach to docking going to occur and this is this is something that we uh, we try and get it so that the craft is reasonably close before we engage the docking process. Um, and there you go, we've, we've transferred over nicely and now we're coming in with the docking port as being the sort of the lead for this. And this is a very sort of slow process, but not as slow as you might find in uh, in reality. Obviously this is reality, but in, in other realities. Um, so I've sped it up a little bit for you, like 12 times in places. We just come in, and we have a bad connection, which is, I think, the first time we've had a bad connection in the Space Harbor project. Um, so we pull forward and then obviously Anita May is, uh, she's a little broken by that because she was going in manual. Uh, it wasn't computerized. It was her flying this manual. And that was a, that was a bump, uh, quite a powerful bump, in fact, because uh, the, the, the harbor is now on a bit of a, 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 shall we say a wonk, it's a technical term, a wonk. So this, the harbor has to be given the instructions to actually reorientate itself correctly. And then ironically, the harbor carries out the docking. Um, Anita May is not looking good for uh, for getting any awards for this. Let's be entirely be honest. So once docked, we dr transfer the crew across and they uh, they go into the habitation compartments and we basically we shut down the uh, the capsule and the command and the the service module that brought them here. The Faraday components are basically shut down and this 
they are little more than a little lifeboat now a storage space the rest of the vessel the rest of the space harbor will actually act to support the crew while they're up there for the 30 days and it's a it's a good 30 days in orbit um so you know uh, 30th of january we're going to be spending all of uh, all of, of february in orbit so after that 30 days we're now into f beyond february we're now in march we've missed the whole of february uh, the crew will transfer back into that capsule power it up they've got to obviously put the heaters on and things like that because they've let it cool down a little bit get the air cycling through it again and get everything ready it takes a little while to get this going they transfer themselves across make sure everything's okay and then it's just a case of undocking now in the past we would actually have brought our endurance one uh, space harbor was actually returned to earth but we're actually going to use leave endurance two in orbit um, it still has um, a purpose. We're going we're gonna to use it for a little bit of testing. It's not going to be crewed again. Its, it's crew reserves are, are its fuel reserves, its, its food and so forth are pretty much used up. They've been, you know, uh, dirtied. The air is, is about as useful as it's going to be. But it does act as an opportunity for us to test other technology we're going to need to use. So while it's left in orbit, we're actually going to prepare the uh, the faraday for return we dump off some of the extra waste that we don't need um, and we come round for our deorbit we've actually carried out our deorbit burn and it is now just a case of preparing for atmospheric interface now obviously we want to uh, we want to get rid of our service module so we move ourselves into the normal we detach the service module there we go swing ourselves back into the retrograde direction um, and rotate ourselves so that we can actually try and use as we tried last time we're going to try and just tilt the craft a little bit on re-entry for that lifting body re-entry and and this is something we're trying to just improve how we approach space we need to just get good at space is what we're trying to do you know we're, we're currently being chased by the russians and the americans the americans are less so although they have now They've now put out a craft that looks awfully like the Faraday. It looks a bit chunkier, if I'm entirely honest. I don't like the look of it. It's black, you know. It's, it's black. It's very just, you know, industrial, isn't it? We've done that in the in the UK. We we we, we like to, you know, make things a little bit more interesting. Um, so they have that. The the Russians have got some of their their craft going really well, actually. And we we need to keep just improving. We need to make sure we don't have any major disasters. So. We come through the atmosphere there. We're still starting to get a little turn on our, um, our our off center of mass when we come in, but in general, a wonderful little landing. Here we go, splash down into the ocean. Wonderful. Now, something a little different. I was asked about showing you well, how we're doing with tech. Well, you can, you can have a look at the tech tree here. I've, uh, I've I've put this up so you can have a look. This is where we are at the moment. You see, we've got a lot of money and quite a bit of science I haven't actually spent because. We're still doing a lot of research. We've very much pushed with the space, this the um, space harbor aspect of this. I believe it's on the tech tree. It's called space stations, and uh, and space planes. We've pushed a lot to get our uh, javelin program going. You'll notice that our rocket engines have pretty much stopped, though. We we don't have much in the way of rocket engine development. We are looking at hydrolox with the RZ20s, but not massively. What we have pushed on is material science. Material science electric charge communications we've really put a lot of work into getting those in because our engines are very limited we the british have not really developed any new engines we've just you know adapted ones we've already got so it's very much about getting the most out of our engines as much as we can and, and that's what we're doing with our research and we do have a lot of points to spend though we go over a thousand points and that just keeps going up um you can see our astronauts we have 14 members of our astronaut corps we have introduced i think three astronaut classes and you can see them lined up there they've all got experience on orbit um we will be having some retirements coming up i believe and our current state of sort of progress regarding uh being able to do research and being able to produce craft you can see we've spent a lot of our funds on on getting up this this rate so we can actually build our rockets at a reasonably high rate this is uh, going really well for us but anyway back to the launches so we have the 3rd of march 1965 just after the crew of uh, endurance to land we are given a green light for the next step of our mission and this is going to be and a, a craft that is going to uh, gonna hopefully be the cornerstone for what we're gonna do with our space harbors, or at least for now it is anyway. Um, we're actually launching the first of our Maxwell 2 craft. You have seen a Maxwell before. 
The first Maxwell you saw was actually our docking program and it was actually one of these with a smaller propellant based docking module on it um, and it was actually docking to its upper stage. This thing is not docking to its upper stage. This Maxwell is very much docking to something else and you can see there it's just changing itself a little bit. It's just uh, refining its orbit because it wants to get into a nice stable orbit there. And um, this thing is going to be going all the way to Endurance 2. It's going to be a automated docking. Obviously, Anita May in the previous mission did not do well with her docking. So we're going to be looking at what can we do uh, automated. And this craft is actually packed to the gunnels with resources. It's got that whole center section there, the white section is service module. We have a large service module that the, 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 the crew of a station could access. It's a pressurized area that they can access and that's wonderful for us. We can store all sorts of food, water, oxygen in there, a little bit of, we've got our lithium hydroxide canisters built in as well. And then at the lower section there, we have the Maxwell uh, orbital maneuvering system with its solar panels, its thrusters, RCS. That whole bottom section is actually the same as we have on our endurance craft, in fact. So they, they are, share that component. So after about two hours in orbit, um, the Maxwell carried out its uh, attempts to carry out a burn to bring it to rendezvous with Endurance 2. It, requires only, it only required 25 meters per second, which was a lovely little sort of move for us. This craft does have a good bit of Delta V in it, but we're not gonna need it all right now. And that's good for us because of what will come later. So um, it's gonna actually hopefully ha take place in the light. We've actually timed this so that the two craft approach each other just as they come out of eclipse um, around the earth. So we can actually see what's going on uh, primarily because this is our first automated docking. We're obviously using cameras and things like that to bring it in. The Maxwell fires up its its thrusters and just takes off that little bit of speed that it's gained and, uh, and slows down into sort of parallel parking. The endurance, of course, can, can control itself. It's got uh, orientation control. So it's holding itself in the normal anti-normal position. And then the Maxwell will just do the same. It's actually going to slide into the normal anti-normal. You see that we're just bringing the craft around. They're going to position themselves both so they're facing normal and anti-normal respectively. And, and then the Maxwell is just going to move in ever so slowly to bring itself as close as possible to this craft. Now, after about uh, 52 minutes of, of flight, so we've been in orbit now for you know, less than three hours and we're actually coming in for a docking. We, we did our first maneuver in under two hours. We've, we took about 52 minutes to then complete that maneuver for, for approach. And now it's just a case of edging the craft in. Um, we, we take a lot of time with this. We don't want to go in hard. We know that this craft is quite heavy. It's a, it's, you know, approaching four tons of mass, the Maxwell. It is on the limit for our, uh, our, our white Trident II rockets. Um, it pushes it a lot. It's, it's actually as heavy as, or slightly heavier than our, uh, our Faraday craft. Um, so we are, we are aware of the fact that it is, it takes a little bit of a push to get it up there. Um, it does require good flying. So this is going to dock onto the station there and uh, and hopefully it's going to prove that we can actually do some automated docking to our our space harbors whenever possible why do we keep calling them stations i wonder where the word station comes from definitely a harbor why would you why would you call this a station there are no trains there are no tracks a harbor it's in the sea of the sky obviously so i don't know where this station word comes from anyway so we come in nice and easily there just slide in and it was a, a really nice docking there. We actually uh, we actually got a little bit of RCS fire from both craft because they started to pull on each other. And uh, and this thing is gonna stay in orbit now as this for a few days while we, we set the systems up, we check that they're working and just make sure everything's going on. You will notice we docked the the, uh, the Maxwell at 90 degrees to the, the solar panel position at 90 degrees to the space harbor. Uh, this was actually on purpose. I, I, I didn't expect it to be as good as this. But the idea was that um, as the space harbor stays in, in orbit, it's actually gonna basically rotate, well, it's not gonna rotate, but the Earth and its position relative to the sun will change. And as such, we could end up with an, an annoying situation where the solar panels are end on to the sun because of this orientation we have it sat in. So the idea was just to stick the, the Maxwell at right angles so that we actually had just a little bit of power coming in if we needed to. So at least we could, we could do something with the craft and yeah. 
that's uh, that's what we've done and it seems to be quite well so in the next episode we're going to do a bit more with this uh, the maxwell has not finished its task because we can't offload these supplies to this station there is nobody to do that there's no robot inside that can do it um, so this is merely a test of a project an idea that we have so we're gonna have to send something else up i think to take full advantage of this but from me until next time have a great one